Dan, I want to ask you, like I did to the people, you're going to share with us, you wrote a new book, but also what we're doing here in the, in the sense of producing a video that, you know, spending a couple of days here to produce, to help people in their faith. So why don't you set the stage, please? Yeah. So I, I, going back to Germany. Um, yeah. One of the things that I realized, this is my second trip. Kyle's been over, I think, four times. Wow. Yeah. I, I realized this time they're not just looking for a program to help people with afflictions. And there's a lot over there um, because Germany's becoming neo pagan. Yeah. Um, and we are too. Don't, don't of course. Me. Yeah. So, so uh, they're looking for help in the United States. They're looking for, for, uh, a return to tradition. And this is what we do. Um, the Libra Cristo method, the book that I've just finished. Yeah. We're using it as part of our, as father Ripperger's uh, four phase protocol. But I also wrote it in mind uh, for any Catholic that wants to go deeper into their faith. Mm -hmm. Because um, I quote early on in, in the introduction, I quote uh, Father Gabriel Lamorth, who says that, you know, one one good confession is worth 100 exorcisms. That's right. And that, Famous. And that many, many Catholics, he, he says, he says exorcist sensitives, those are the, some sensitives or people that, that are work on certain exorcist teams have a, somebody who has so-called mystical gifts and charismatics, he said. They oftentimes fall into an error of looking for the looking to to subvert the ordinary means of sanctification mm. and liberation, which is prayer and the sacrament. There you go. And suffering. And he says when they, they when they do that, they they oftentimes inadvertently fall into the trap of magic. He says, and so we can fall into this trap of magic, and, and we and we no longer trust the tradition of the church. We no longer have faith in the true living God. We no longer fall back into the good old fashioned ordinary means. What what I would call smash mouth Catholicism, which is just grinded out through prayer, through sacrifice, mm -hmm. through suffering, and ordering our lives to the sacraments. And so the program that 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 we're doing uh, is is teaching what are the sacraments what is where does the role of the Virgin Mary she's not just a you know the a model for mm -hmm. prayer a model of docility of course she's all those things mm -hmm. but she's God's perfect creature she has right. total subversive power over the demon she 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 the demon tremble at the name mention of Mary just just a, a month ago in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a, a, a formal session the demon yelled out to the whole group, all her, every time you call on her, she <laughs> comes. She puts her mantle around you. At the at the priest praying, invoking the holy name of Mary, the demon says, No, don't call her, because when she you call her, she comes. So putting the Virgin Mary first and and, and center of our spiritual lives, returning to a Eucharistic uh, 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 um a, a focus in our lives uh, of Eucharist ad adoration, Lexio Divina, exactly. per, uh, reading scripture every day, returning to prayer. People think that, that that spiritual warfare is this secret. I need this special secret prayer. It, you know, if I can do this, no, it's a grind. Yeah, and it's a return to tradition. It's return to order and 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 purifying yourselves in your home. Knowing the clean from the unclean, clean from unclean sexual practices. Most yeah. Catholic homes, most Catholic marriages and, and, and their sexual practice would make a, a 17th century pagan blush. You know, uh, we, we need to get return to purity. Uh, and so this book tried to walk you through. And, and ultimately, it's a one long, deep dive general confession because most Catholics have never done that. They've never realized, yeah, that's a really bad sin. I really I need to confess that. I really need to work on this virtue because I'm struggling with this particular vice. Right. It's a development of virtue. And this is how we combat. This is how we this is this is Catholic spirituality. And Dan, people can pick up your book from Tan Books, but we ask people to go to our website because Tan has been generous in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. So you want to go to vmpr.org, go to the clip where it says Tan Books. And Dan, what's the title of the book? It's uh, the Libra Cristo Method, uh, A Manual for Spiritual Combat. There you go. Yep. So that's the one you want to get. And, and again, uh, this book is going to be helpful to mom, dad, the entire family. So go to vmpr.org, click on the Tan Books. Uh, that we have a relationship with Tan. If you go directly to Tan, we don't get a support that we normally get. So that's why Tan put a link on our website because they appreciate what Virgin Most Powerful Radio is doing right now, promoting a book of theirs. So that's how we'd like to do it. Dan, getting back to your purpose here uh, at the Sacred Heart Chapel here in downtown Covina with Jesse and Kyle, 
I'd like to ask you to kind of tell us a little bit of what you're doing and this video. What are what are the goals of this video? And I might ask everybody, I'll just say it up front. We got video crews here. We got expenses to put the guys together to put this together. And if people want to support it after what Dan tells you about it, I think you will go to vmpr.org and just put down a donation if you could, or call me because I want to know if you really think this is important. I think you do. My cell number is 661-972-7872. So Dan, tell us what you're doing with Dan and with uh, Kyle and Jesse. So we're working on uh, a project of doing some in, in instructional informational videos um, on the subject of, of spiritual warfare, but also um, it isn't an isolated uh, topic of theology or even of practice in mm -hmm. the church. It's, it's, it, it, it brings together every aspect of theology uh, uh, and, and practice, uh, uh, what we do as Catholics. And so we're doing a series of, of videos uh, on anything from the sacraments, on prayer, on how to pray this type of spiritual warfare prayer, the effectiveness of, of, of a prayer regimen, um, generational spirits. What, there's a lot of confusion on what yes. those mean. So we're trying to bring some what, what Jesse would call DDT, Devil Defeating Theology, um, to, 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 to counteract and put out good stuff because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, mediocre or bad theology out there. And, and we're trying to put out some good stuff. Uh, and you've been generous enough to let us use your studio. Oh, wow. And, uh, and anytime I can get a little Terry Barber time is, it oh, works for I'm, I, guys. I support you 110%. I want to also mention there's something that might be, uh, well, I'll just give it as a teaser. I know as a lay evangelist, Whenever I go to parishes, lots of my goodwilled, charismatic Catholic friends think it's important for them to pray over me. And Dan, I don't let them do that for several reasons, but I ask them for their prayers, yes. But I want to say that I believe you guys are going to be addressing that on the video, but could you just generally give us a shorter version of what's going to be on that video? Why people should get the video is these are the kind of nuggets you're going to get that are, are something that many people will never address, but I think you guys do. So tell us why it wouldn't be a good idea to have people laying hands on each other. Yeah, it's interesting. In Germany, one of the bishops recently had a like it was a world youth or their German youth conference, and mm -hmm. and at the end, the, the the lay leaders had all the children raise their hand and say, you know, Your Excellency, let us bless you. Mm -hmm. And the bishop actually stopped and said, You're going to bless me. There's a hierarchy of blessing. Yeah. And 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 priest hands are anointed. I was That's I right. was I was present when my my former pastor passed away of cancer years ago, and he, uh, but before he died, he got a, he got the anointing of the sick. Yes. In the last rites, and he put his hands out. That's right. And the and the priest that anointed him took his hands and full, and turned them downward and said, "You are a priest of the living God. Your hands are already anointed." So he anointed the back of his hands. That's, That's right. the custom. Yep. The priest hands are holy. This is a holy gesture. So the imposition of hands is something that flows through office. And that office of the priesthood, the priest can lay hands on people, but lay people can lay hands in blessing on their children or husband upon his wife. So with, within that familial construct, we're trying to, we'll flesh that out in these videos. Yes. Explaining, this is the construct of the right to bless according to the teachings of the church. I was just reading this the other day in, in the office of readings. And it was talking from, this is from St. Ambrose on mm -hmm. the catechesis on the mysteries. He says, he's talking about the priest. You saw the Levite. You saw the priest, the high priest. Don't consider his outward form, but the grace given by their mysteries. You spoke in the presence of angels, as it is written, the lips of a priest guard knowledge, and men seek the law from his mouth. For he is the angel of the Lord Almighty. There is no room for deception, no room for denial. He is an angel whose message is the kingdom of Christ and eternal life. You must judge him, not by his appearance, but by his office. Wow. Remember what he handed on to you. Weigh up his value and so acknowledge his standing. And so it comes through office. Yes. The right to bless comes through office. And, and we track through, uh, and Jesse and I went through this last time I was here, in the Old Testament. Every time the, the, the phrase imposition of hands was used in the Old Testament, it was used either a priestly or a patriarchal blessing. Into the New Testament, you've got Jesus blessing the children. You've got, you've got an impartation of the Holy Spirit uh, um, through, the, through ordination or confirmation of post-baptismal anointing um, or, the, or the imposition of hands upon the sick 
um, uh, by a priest mm -hmm. uh, or bishop. And so, and so we track this in scripture and then go into the early church and show uh, awesome. the, how this develops. But those are some of the things that we're kind of doing to, to kind of clear up some of that confusion. Yes. And I want to mention, if anybody makes a donation, I'll give you a copy of this recording uh, as a way of saying thank you, because uh, it is going to cost some money to put this together. You can go to vmpr.org. Or you can call our toll-free number, 877-526-2151. Even after the show, you can call me, and I'll thank you personally by calling me on my cell phone, 661-972-7872. Dan, you gave one example of what's going to be in this video to help people understand what the do's and don'ts of our faith. And, you know, you mentioned traditional Catholicism. Let's be honest. In the last 50 years, as people have stopped going to confession, going to mass, adoration, uh, what's happened is uh, it's opening up a plethora of demonic influences in our church and even in the world. And I, my question is, is when you talk about the fundamentals of the, of the faith, nothing, you know, nothing sophisticated, just living a sacramental life, living close to having a prayer life, having, I use the word discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm going to say, uh, this is my approach, and you know, I want to have your take. I think we should have the discipline every morning and during the day of it, whether it's the noontime Angelus. We just automatically, this is who we are. We pray the Angelus. We we say our morning prayers. We have our our, our spiritual warfare booklet for, um, that you guys published. And these, this is something we just do like we like we eat our breakfast, it's just this is who we are. And I think that maybe maybe the word discipline is something that needs to come back in our church. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a, I was a former military officer, and so so discipline is important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was ingrained into me as a as a young man. We'll put all of our discipline and effort to be successful in the world. Yeah, to be successful, I was a fighter. I put I had tons of discipline. I had super rigor discipline mm -hmm. when it came to fighting and training. But when it comes to spiritual life, we suddenly get soft and effeminate as men. Mm. St. Catherine of Siena, the doctor of the church, said that everybody should pray for 30 minutes a day unless they're busy. She <laughs> says. I love it. And if you're busy, she said, you should pray for an hour. <laughs> Right? So we need to grind this out. St. Yes. Teresa uh, of Avila, uh, I, quoted, I quoted her in the, in the book as well. She said, she said, when she's talking to her daughters in the pursuit of virtue, she said, I want you to be barbada, right? Yep. That's a Spanish word for bearded, like, like a soldier coming off of campaign in pursuit of virtue. And it takes discipline. Yes. Virtue was just, a, the, the virtue and vice are the same thing in the sense that they are both repeated acts. Right. So developing a prayer life, a life order to prayer and discipline is absolutely critical to spiritual life. Amen. As we say from St. Augustine, the truth is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. Amen. You're listening.